big red uh-huh. button. Big red button is always a big red button. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you might be in the world. This failed to start early, and we may not have started. Who knows? I really don't know. But we got a fairly crowded house. Not a Kiwi band, or was it a Kiwi band? It was a Kiwi band, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Good day, everybody. Uh, where shall we start? We're we're waiting on Jack beats um, so he's not with us yet so let's jump straight into um some bad news i think uh to start with um sort of relates to our world you might have seen oz by drone good morning to you that means we are on air that's good um the Ryder cup some sort of golf sporting things in california as well um a lady was hit uh, uh, last week, I think it was, uh, by a golf ball, and sadly has lost uh, the use of her eye. Um, so what are we going to do about golf balls before anything else? Come on. I say we ban them. Regulate them. Yeah. Yeah. A license for every golf ball. And uh, will we have some sort of remote ID system? Absolutely. And funny enough, I could jump. I could easily jump then to. Did did everyone see the very tiny ADSB uh, chip uh, that has been released by uh, Avionics? Good day, Jack. Good day, good day. Can you hear us, Jack? Oh, you'll have to unmute your microphone, Jack. Someone just undo their zipper. Oh, there's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous for a second. <laughs> what, did I, what did I get into here, guys? <laughs> what, what, what have we invited you to? This is as we come the golf show. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, there you go. Very good. Um, Jack, your microphone's muted. Um, just wonder if you could unmute it and we'll say hi to you. And Louis, mute your microphone because of the zipper. Yeah, right there at the top, Jack. Just push that button right there at the top. Yeah. And yeah, so, oh, this is this this will be terrible. Jack is a former F four pilot, now an airline pilot, and he has restored uh, an OQ two. Oh, and he's gone as well now. And we we'll, uh, hopefully we'll hear all about that in a minute. Um, we'll see what happens. All right. Anyway, let's go back. So, uh, remote IDs for golf balls. We know the technology exists to. To have tiny, tiny ADSB transmitters in them now, thanks to UAV Onyx, um, I think we should make it so. No, but it, it shows the folly, doesn't it? We're worried about drones, which have never recreational drones, never severely injured or killed anybody. Yet, three hundred thousand people was it thirty thousand people die every year on the roads in the USA. Thirty thousand people killed by firearms. Ten people a day drown. Um, yet, no one's been killed by a recreational drone. Yet, we're regulating the hell out of drones, and people are getting blinded by golf balls. It shows that life is full of risks. You cannot eliminate it, you can only manage it. And you should focus on the big risks before you start ferreting around with the little ones. You know, like the, the guy in the Titanic who's busy with his finger in a hole while an iceberg comes through the side. It's just, nah, it's crazy. I have a safety matrix of flying with drones for you to help me out finish it, uh, Bruce. I've been doing it for already one week because the regulators want a safety matrix to be done and a safety evaluation risk and whatever they want us to do. So it's as bad as preparing to, to register a, 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 an experimental aircraft. So well, Louis, you should ask them for a copy of their risk analysis they did when they produced their regulations, because you can't produce regulations without a risk analysis. Otherwise, there's no substantiating evidence to justify the removal of the freedoms that people are being exposed to through the regulation. They've got to come up with their own risk assessment, their own risk analysis and say, we are going to make you do this because the risk is this big and the risk is a result of um, this probability and this consequence. If they haven't done that, then they're just dreaming. You know, you've got to call them to account, tell them, you know, where, where is your risk analysis? Because most of the regulators haven't done it. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Um, Paul, it's, it's been a good uh, first outing for Paul. He's already put up a, a link to, uh, to to contradict something. And that's that little boy uh, in England that, who had his eye uh, sliced in a park. And there was another one in, uh, in America, wasn't there? And I was... I must admit, I was quite dismayed, actually, for both of these. Because in both of these examples uh 
our community, as it were, jumped up and sort of started saying, well, what was the child doing there? The, that, the other, was making all sorts of other excuses. Um, but these aren't life-threatening injuries. I mean, the, 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 the bad injuries, you wouldn't want it happening, but they're not life-threatening. Um, and a lot of people talk about the one where the guy cut his head off with a helicopter, but that wasn't a multi-rotor drone. That was a helicopter. It's a different thing. We're talking recreational multi-rotor drones. There have been no deaths and no life-threatening injuries as a result of the operation. In the 10 years, 10 years in which they have been operating, in the mean, during that 10 years, 300,000 people have died on the roads in America, 300,000 have died of gunshot wounds, 10 people a day from, from drowning. So really seriously, magnitude of the um, problem is very, very small. Doesn't mean we shouldn't try and manage it, but we shouldn't try and overmanage it. And the restrictions and the regulations should be commensurate with the level of risk. And it's, it's so, worth adding with these um, incidents that we've mentioned, we all know them. They're so few and far between, they're well known. And and that particular one there from the BBC, that's going back years. So again, we're, we're using incidents from a around the entire world and we can still only find a handful. Uh, if you were to look at any other kind of accident on day-to-day -day things, as we say all the time, you would be able to find thousands, tens of thousands, so many, you wouldn't even know where to start with examples. And, and that's the difference. Also, uh, you've got to realise that well, each of those incidents has involved breaking the rules. I mean, people that caused those injuries had broken the regulations. So the regulations that were there, um, people chose to break them. If you put a whole lot more regulations in, do you think they'll suddenly say, oh, now there are 20 regulations, I'm going to start following the rules now. No, the people who break the rules will break the rules no matter how many rules you've got, how severe they are and whatever the penalties are. So increasing regulation will not address that problem. So come on, Bruce. So if they broke the regulations, it's because there are some regulations. So perhaps the regulations are not appropriate. That's a different uh, subject. So what uh, what should well, be done? More regulations well, no. or better regulations? It was not a case of better because if doing that act was a breach of the regulations, the regulation is fine. It is, says you shouldn't do that. And if they do that, then obviously the regulation is... is is good, but the compliance is very low, and that's where the problem lies. If people complied with the regulations, wouldn't have any of these problems at all. Why do rules and regulations in the automotive industry work? Why do we follow or not follow speed limits? And then what is successful about speed limits being put in place? Why, why do they work? Do they work? We've got 30,000 deaths every year on the roads in America. So are those yeah, regulations are. working any better than drone wrecks? Are you I, well? So, like, first of all, like those deaths are not directly caused to speeding incidents, but you know, like, the, they're there for a reason. So, why are they there, and what is the reasoning, and and how can we take the the uh, what seems like an appropriate response to the potential of speeding, and apply it to UAS regulations? Enforcement. That's all we need. That's the missing link. Enforcement. Yeah, and not only enforcement, but uh, also the the guys that are caught. Um, nobody knows what happens afterwards. So uh, unless he's a very uh, media coverage uh, brought by the community of the drones, like the, we had the, the Chappie case, uh, no one knows what happens. Uh, what happened to the guy that smashed the, 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 the phantom on the helicopter, on the military helicopter in New York? Does anyone know what happened? I, I do, and nothing happened. So There was, yeah. there was, no, there was no substantiation of evidence, but... So a slap in the wrist? Not even that? Not even that. Wow. So it's good it's come on bruce it's okay to, to break the rules even if they are very little and it's, it's not okay to break the rules that, but... go on. Yeah. go go in you go you go oh, I, was just, I was just gonna say but we also saw that of the rules not being enforced when there was a flight near the prime minister in, in the uk a, a few weeks ago and then there's obviously over in belfast where the footage was taken from the bbc so uh, time and again where there are uh, incidents uh, that are seen in the public eye, you, you never hear of any consequences, not not even a, a caution. So it's it literally is nothing more than a slap on the wrist. Is that because is that because particularly in the case of the prime minister, is that because the copper was just being sensible? Was it really that much of a risk? Did it really matter? Did he have enough time to bother to sort it out? Uh, I mean that's 
that that's a debate that that, that, that I guess should be had. But the, the problem is when you have these rules and and you're trying to um, conform to them and others aren't, and it, it it makes it difficult, doesn't it? I mean, I think there should be a debate. But if if the rules aren't going to be enforced uh, as they are, then you should just loosen them for everyone. You know, make it so everyone's playing from the same rule book. But you, you've got to decide one way or the other. And if you are going to have rules there, and if you are if you are going to continue on tightening them, then you should at the very least enforce them. Otherwise, they're pointless. They just confuse matters because those people that adhere to them end up creating a rod for their own back and not being able to perform tasks where those that ignore them can. And it's it, it's it's backwards. Yeah, and you end up with the other situation where the rules are being ignored. So the regulator's response is, we'll make more rules. I mean, it doesn't work. If they're going to, if you're not going to enforce the rules, no amount of extra rules are going to change the situation. Without that cornerstone of enforcement, um, then you can have all the rules that you can think of and it'll make no difference to people's behaviour. If you didn't have a penalty for speeding on the roads, people would just ignore the speed limits. Well, a lot of people would anyway, and that's the problem. Well, the rules are used at the regulator's convenience. At the, at yes. the toilet. No, that, that 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 won't. That's not an international term, Bruce. <laughs> anyway, let's let's, let's let's move away quickly. We'll 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 jump back um, uh, in a minute to Paul and his three three six. Uh, his great three three six video. Um, but uh, first of all, I, I, I'd love to bring um, Jack in, and uh, and because he's got a very exciting. I'm excited about this anyway. No one else is. Um, you've got a, a a very interesting looking airframe. Uh, behind you, Jack. So first of all, good afternoon to you. And can you hear me over? Yeah, yeah, good afternoon, Gary. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, you're loud and clear. Also, you're a former F4 pilot and now an airline pilot, I believe. And you have restored an aircraft. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to work, walk us through your aircraft. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a retired airline guy. I've been, I've been retired now about nine years from uh, Delta. So uh, yeah, I found this in a... Uh, in a shop in uh, locally there, antique shop, saying it was hanging up for 35 years. It's a 1942 drone used by the Army for gunnery practice and uh, weighs 108 pounds at takeoff. They launched it off a catapult and they would fly it remotely with uh, uh, tube type radios and uh, barely had control of it there, just a rudder and elevator and the throttle ran at full speed. And these were these were built in the thousands. They were used by our Navy and by the Army. And they would practice either on the ground or from the ships. They would launch it on a, a catapult and uh, provide about 150 pounds of bungee force to get it airborne. And then they flew it for about an hour, had about an hour, a little over a gallon's worth of fuel in it. And uh, these are six horsepower, two cylinder, two cycle, and and it came down on a 24-foot parachute. And uh, you can see it here. I think it shows pretty well here. But this one here was still packed, so I was pretty fortunate to uh, see that. So uh, it's really interesting. Wings are interchangeable, as well as the uh, tail surfaces are all interchangeable. So that's something the military did. Are you still there, Gary? Yeah, I know. Still here. The, okay. um I, I see it say um, uh, uh, contra-rotating uh, props, and it's two-cylinder. So is it one cylinder driving one prop and one the other, or has it got gearing in it? How does that work? There's a gearing in the front here, and uh, it's a gearbox. So it's a, it's a, uh, a gearbox run by two cylinders. It's, uh, each cylinder fires at the same time, so it's, uh, they're, it's simultaneously firing. The props are just, just on one shaft. But the, the, the uh, rear prop there, which is uh, counter-rotating there, is a, a series of three gears in the gearbox, and it, it changes the direction of the prop. And the reason they used these was because as they came off the catapult, the torque, they weren't able, because of the radios, I guess, that the torque would affect them and they couldn't control it. So they decided, the uh, Ryder Aircraft Corporation, or a radio plane out in California, they decided to put the counter-rotating props on and eliminated that. Uh, Two years and later, left... they... pardon? So, sorry, after you. Sorry, sorry, after you. Sorry. Uh, after after about a couple of years of flying these, uh, they built about 3,600 of these, 
after that, they, uh, they, they decided that I guess the radios got better or something or a little quicker response. And so that, so what they did, they went to the single prop, basically the same engine, but with just single prop. And then they controlled, I guess, the torque after uh, it came off the uh, rails. So now you've left the, um, the wing uh, un uncovered one, one half there. Now, now why would that be? Uh, I did that because uh, this was this was damaged uh, quite a bit. It sat in the window there, and the fabric all deteriorated as well as the wood. So, as an educational tool, I left it uncovered, and therefore uh, people can see the signatures of the original workers on the wing spars, and how the technology was, how these were built up using spruce. So it's uh, it's very interesting. So I figured uh, the people like to see that. The last show we were at. And then the other one, all, all, all the repairs were done with using uh, current material, such as the Seekonite material they use on some fabric covered airplanes. I don't suppose so, you yeah, don't I have don't a, um, I, don't, I don't suppose you've got a famous signature on there, have you? Uh, no, but, but uh, if you ever, anybody can remember uh, some of the famous people uh, out in California, there was a, uh, a lady named Norma Jean. I don't know if you can see her picture here. But she was a young lady that worked in the uh, engine factory, and she was discovered by our, our president, uh, Ronald Reagan, at the time. And he sent one of his, uh, he was a commander in chief uh, in the, I guess it was Navy or one of the military. And what he did, he sent this uh, photographer over to take a picture of her. And, uh, and her name was Norma Jean Mortensen. She later became Marilyn Monroe in the United States, a very uh, famous uh, uh, actress and uh, uh, so uh, really interesting history. I don't know if you can see her picture here. So. Not so well, but I've put it in the uh, show notes below. There's a link to to the airframe, and and you'll see that picture of Marilyn Monroe there. That's that is that is quite a thing, Jack. I'm very well, so. When you saw it in in the sh shop, did you know what it was immediately? Uh, no, I didn't really know much about them. I always wanted one of those two-cylinder, two-cycle engines because I knew they went to drones, but I didn't know anything more about the, the drones. So it took me about a week to get educated and find some people in the United States here that, uh, that knew more about those than I did and some of the museum people in that. And uh, so I got educated, figure out what it was worth. And so I, I made the deal and, uh, in a week and brought it home. So, I, yeah, and... I, since I've rebuilt some live aircraft, uh, you know, uh, full-scale aircraft in the past, I figured it's a good project. So it, uh, it's a, a, lot, a piece of history. So I kind of, I'm not going to, it would never fly. Uh, I would build another one, uh, a similar one, just uh, to fly if I was ever going to do it. But this is just too much history. The tubes are all welded steel tubes in fuselage. Uh, covered in the wings, as you can see, are spruce. So uh, aircraft spruce. So that's that's uh I'm, I'm still learning about the history of it there it's uh very few exist probably less than a dozen in the country most of them mm -hmm. are in museums and uh so i'm going to take it around to a lot of the shows for as educational and, and teach people uh you know a piece of history i uh, have a series of photographs from world war ii that show uh, how these were and uh as they shot them down there and how they trained our our guys and this one picture here uh, actually shows the coming down in the 24-foot parachute. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Probably, probably looks uh, down as they recovered them. They they didn't have they had a landing gear, but it was only used for uh, recovery for straight on the parachute. Uh, here's one that was hit by uh, ground fire, and uh, the training was to be able to shoot. These aircraft at about 500 feet away, and that would simulate other aircraft into the ship or to the Army folks at 1,500 feet. So they got yeah. a lot of good practice. They must have went through thousands of these things. So it's a it's a it's a piece of history that uh, exists. This one is 76 years old now. So uh, wow, that's, that's, any, that's amazing. Any question? Yeah, let's have any yeah. questions from the floor. I mean, Bruce would have been there. He'd, that would have been like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty, nasty. But there were folks. I guess someone someone um, actually flew one of these uh, years ago. Older gentleman. I guess he actually was able to fly the one of the originals. But I'd hate to ever lose it. So.
Yeah, fair enough. Uh, was there any any of the radio gear in it, or was it just just the airframe and engine? Yeah, it was just the airframe, all the associated parts in the airframe, the uh, coil and magnetic, but no, they're really scarce to find. And I know there are a few people in the country are looking for them if they could, just to kind of you know bring it up to see if they can get it working again. It's two radio and thirty pounds. And you can see in the, well, I can't see now, but uh, up in the front, they, uh, reasonable batteries weren't invented yet. So they used regular dry cell six volt batteries to run the motor. And yeah. uh, in fact, the two radios, they had 67 and a half volt batteries uh, to run radios, the tube radios. So that must be why it weighed 108 pounds at takeoff. Yeah, no, it's just someone in the comments says Garage Life TV was asking how much this weighs, so 108 pounds. This is quite a chunky thing. Uh, so thank you very, very much for showing it, Jack, and please stick around right. and, and chip in. Uh, if sure, you have sure anything well. to say about the nonsense that we'll continue to speak now, I'm gonna we're going to move uh, ourselves very quickly uh, towards Paul, um, and Paul really has one of the video i know bruce has had a rant video about uh, 336 and has called called out another example of a great video and um what are you moving louis <laughs> what are you doing louis first it was zip, zip now i don't know what it is um <laughs> uh but yeah 336 tell us more about your thoughts paul and have you had much reaction to your video yeah, so um, so I live in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, which is like 45 minutes south of Muncie, Indiana, which is where the uh, Academy of Model Aeronautics is based. If if you're a United States person, you're probably a multi G or uh, sorry, a uh, uh, Academy of Model Aeronautics member. And if you're not, then you've probably heard about them because they're kind of like the the chief governing body for like. For, for hobbyists in the United States when it comes to model aviation. And that includes both UAS as well as, you know, traditional models, helis, all that stuff. Because of that, I try to keep a very tight relationship with the people there. Um, you know, obviously they're very close, so I could just pop in, you know, ask some questions. Um, and so we had a conversation um, a couple weeks back about, you know, the information that was going to be coming out like they i mean they were already aware of the bill and um and so we had a conversation and i you know asked them a bunch of questions learned as much as i could about what the bill was and then i took it and read it on my own and try to understand exactly what regulations were going to be suggested or put in place and um and then just kind of made a video. I, I took that information, I took what I had and tried to digest it as much as I could for you know the short attention spans of uh, internet audiences. And um, you know just put the word out that, you know, like, hey, I think that we, we, we as a, an industry and as an organization and as a people group don't support 336. So we need to be communicating that to, you know, uh, the, the lawmakers that are relevant to each of us. And so I made a, you know, eight minute video or whatever. Um, just kind of digesting the the three three six, not the three three the the anyway the bill that did, had had just come out and was being voted on that day, which got passed by the house. So that's not good. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's something we've been moaning about here on this very small channel for what two three years? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And since two two thousand and seven. Uh, before SUS news was even a thing. <laughs> we were talking about it in emails and in 2008, occasionally when SUS news became a thing, we, st we mentioned it. So it's been on the radar for a long, long time. And I think just for me, it's quite disappointing that it's been ignored. And now that it's happened and it has happened because the next bit's just a shoe in. Um, people are, are protesting uh, it's a great shame i wonder does anyone really think anything can be done now uh i think so the academy of model aeronautics thinks so um you know would i'm i'd curious to hear why you think that from this point forward it's a shoe in because you know we the bill has only been passed by the house of representatives it still has to make it through the senate and there's a long process still that goes in the process of getting it through the Senate. So there's, you know, well, yes, I agree. People have been kind of stalling on actually doing anything about it. I, I, I do also think that 
you know the 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 legal process in the United States at least has at least set us up with the opportunity to take advantage of you know you know that process right now we have you know I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the timeline is a month to be you know pushing hard on and yeah be loud be annoying you know well I think I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll chuck my answer in quickly and then we'll see what the others say but I I think the reason you're not gonna uh, make a dent is money uh, and you haven't got enough not enough people not enough money that's two reasons I'll leave it to the floor yeah <clears throat> laws and sausage you don't want to know how either are made and <laughs> if, if you'll recall uh, r remember how loud we had to get for 333 um, and, yes. and that was that was a major struggle because it could have ended up being a disaster more of a disaster than it was um, you know and you still had to have a policy license and uh, you know it I think 336 is going to be the same way and there's some big money like you say there's some big money back in this and uh, the, the players are in it to win it and and they're going to be spending some money to get that done hate to say it but that's the way of the world and just help my memory here you know how bad it is Gene uh, 336 was a fudge anyway it was a fudge uh, to keep the AMA happy at around 3.33 time. I can't remember. Something happened. They got forgotten, didn't they, or something. And so 3.36 well, was a quick fudge, wasn't it? Okay, well, here's the thing. I mean, by all accounts, AMA was a no-show. Uh, they, they should have been involved early and very heavily, you know, when we started the art process. And, you know, they, they always took the stance, oh, that's commercial. It's not going to happen to us. We're modelers and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I think that's where they messed up and that's where they missed it. They should have been involved. They should have been listening and they should have, they could have steered this a little better very early on, but because they, they hung back as long as they did their, their relevancy couldn't be proven in a short period of time that it takes to get that done. And, uh, unfortunately I think it's just a, uh, it's a miss on their part and the the other thing was uh, really wanting to be a cbo and they've only just defined a cbo now i believe uh, someone else about to pick pick up on that and to be the C cbo was the golden ticket wasn't it it was uh, why didn't they do that right up front i mean we we've, we've been talking about community based organizations forever and why didn't they jump up and down and say, that's what we are. We are here. Let's go. And they just didn't do that. I mean, well, they, they weren't allowed to be the FAA is, isn't allowed to only have one winner and no one else really stood up. But then there wasn't there wasn't a uh, there wasn't an actually what is a CBO out there. There wasn't a this is a CBO. This is what you need to be and need to do to be a CBO. There was just the, the three letters, and <laughs> no one knew what it really meant. Uh, so that that was my my take on that. But now they've defined it. Other people could stand up. So personally, I hope we see a flight test, FPV Freedom Coalition, unified CBO or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I hope some more stand up. So at least there's some choice, and they might have a bigger voice. I have a feeling they would have a bigger voice. It um, takes money. That takes yeah. money. Yeah, I know. That's it takes a lot of money. We've been trying to get an advocacy group going for years, you know, outside of, you know, the old R Kappa to, to try to resurrect some sort of ad advocacy that we could present to Congress and we could go to our representatives and use as a lever. And uh, if you don't have the money, you're just, you're not going to get anywhere with it. Uh, it. It's hard to get money from people that are flying these aircraft as a hobby and they'd rather put the money into the hobby rather than give you the, the, the $50 or whatever to try to keep the airspace open to you. And, and unfortunately it's one of those things that you're just not going to beat. And here we are. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not being very, very kind to Paul here. We sort of ambushed him, haven't we? Because he's hoping to, change, so hoping to change the world. I, I I prefer to take the stance of optimism, right? You know, if if you go into it with the perspective that you're never going to make it work, it's not going to work. Now, all of the optimism in the world is 
useless if things don't happen. And to kind of resonate with what you're saying, like not only is it a lack of money, which, you know, can be extremely uh, powerful and useful um, in, in, in swaying people's opinions, but you would think that influence would also drive people to take action. And so, for example, here, I, I put a bunch of analytics on that video that I released, um, which uh, the last time I looked at about 15,000 views and the link that I had in there to just do like the bare minimum, which is like click through and like send an email to your House of Representatives member, that link received 563 clicks out of 15,000 people that watch it. Very low probably. Percentage probably all of which have flown or interested in flying or something like that. It, it, and, and so like, not only is it an issue of money, but it's also an issue of the attention of the tension span of the digital age, right? Like the AMA puts stuff out and, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people watched it, but like, I'm, I'm guessing they're seeing a similar amount of uh, percentage of engagement as I am, where it's like 1% are oh, actually not, taking advantage and one percent of their eighty thousand members is still only what 800 people it's nothing and, and Paul, i want to make something perfectly clear to i i'm not a pessimist i'm just an optimist with a track record okay <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's where we base it on seeing the same kind of numbers that that you've seen i mean we were optimistic in, on so many different fronts that we would get participation and getting that participation is and enthusiasm built up is extremely difficult in this digital age. Like you yes. say, the attention span is very short, and uh, you know, getting anybody that's uh, under the age of thirty, and I'm being generous to pay attention, you know, is a <laughs> is a difficult task. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even put it as a digital age thing. I think it's general apathy with uh, and it comes for the, the entire of people with politics that they, they feel they can't change anything uh, sure. and people will just sit by and they'll think well there's other people standing up and, and speaking out that'll be enough and it isn't enough and unfortunately people only jump up and down on the screen when things are banned and it's you know it's almost too late and you're then having to fight laws that are that, that are wrong but that's when it's so much more difficult to actually change anything I, I agree and that pisses me off and that's the same reason that we have some pretty interesting political elections happening on the in the united states like things like that like that 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 apathy that i can't change anything is is just awful and it, it, it and i'm in a, and again i'm not saying that optimism changes anything for anyone but you have to start there. Yeah, it's a better way. It's definitely a better way to live, isn't it? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not, not, not good to live the other way. Um, Adam Dropcopter says in the comments, it's in the interest of small business in UAS to cooperate and protect hobbyists. It is where the talent flows from. And that's Bob on right. And that's what I'm, that I'm it's missing from the piece. Um, NASA could have probably stood up 10 or 20 uh astronauts and said they all flew model aircraft um yep. jack i bet jack flew model aircraft before he was a phantom pilot and an airline pilot you know it's it's the route into aviation and it should be protected and all sorts of other learning and stuff can flow from it if if stuff that it alleged you know the, the electronic uh, remote id and all the stuff that's being forced upon the whole world england's facing everyone everyone's facing this whole problem all this problem because venture capital has put money into apps and projects and things that aren't making money until they own the sky and um we, that's another fight we're up against so i'm i'm ranting i'm ranting I'm no ranting. well and i, I want to add to that like you you picked big powerful influential examples like nasa but like i'm looking at like where was get fpv where was ready-made rc where was drl dr1 like all of these organizations are literally founded on the industry that is trying to be regulated to death and, and i didn't see anything from them the, and the they one, are in, it, it, it's 
uh, it's cocky and awful to say, but I mean, Gene and I and Patrick, we can say, I told you so. <laughs> and that's a terrible, it's a terrible, it's a, it's a terrible, we've been consistently ignored for 10 years. <laughs> it's just, but that's the reality nobody, of it. Nobody likes a smart aleck, Gary. Yeah, exactly, and, uh, I know. When it comes to apathy, when it comes to apathy, I've never got around to that. But um, these are the things that I said in, in my video. You know, it's, this percentage is incredibly small. Most people just can't be bothered, don't care. They're too lazy and stupid, basically. That's the vast majority of people in the world. Half the people in the world have a below average IQ. So that's a disadvantage for a start. Um, but I think what has to happen now is given the limited resources, uh, there has to be a focus, a very intense focus. And I think the best thing that the hobby and the AMA and everyone else could do is to focus on the fact that the, we don't have the drones they're looking for. We fly model aircraft. We fly um, mini quads, which are really more than 50 feet above the ground. We are not the people impinging on the airspace that the the commercial entities want. We tend to fly our models out in the countryside, away from people and things like that. So the AMA should be going and saying 336 is exactly what you should have kept because we don't. We should not be treated the same as all the commercial operators and the idiots with their camera drones. We are a different group. Prove to us that we've ever been a threat to the national airspace or that we've ever been a, a problem from a security perspective. You can't prove it. So therefore, we need to be excluded from this massive regulation that you're applying to the people who are the problem. That's where the AMA fell down. They should have really put the thrust in. They had 336, which was that protection. But as we've said, it's much easier to stand on top of a mountain than to fall down and climb back up. And the AMA or the hobby has fallen down the mountain. We've got to climb back up and get that protection back. It's going to be a very difficult task. Now, the problem, uh, Bruce, you're asking for the legislators to prove uh, that you are not uh, a risk and what they'll do is the just turn it turn it around and do the opposite you have to prove that uh, you are not a risk uh, that's the biggest problem and though and these kinds of uh, associations organizations community based uh, interests um, are not so much organized around the the lingo and the modus operandi of of these uh, organizations so we're at lost let me just but in what a second then we're gonna just gonna say goodbye to gene who's gonna go and drive his ice cream van that he drives <laughs> cheers i have so, a proper ambulance now that's been converted to a drone mobile okay so it's, i'll send pictures that's what i need to do i'll send pictures so you can put it up all right, mate. Enjoy in, in, enjoy showing your mobile command control center to people. It's like and, Ghostbusters, uh, eh? It's got all the flashing yeah. lights and all the stuff on the it's roof. It's called <laughs> Ecto One. My call sign is Ecto One. Believe it or not. There you okay. Go. All right, mate. Look after yourself. Cheers, Gene. Right, he's gone. We can talk about him now. All right, where were we? <laughs> Sorry, Louis. After you. No, no. I was just commenting that the problem is. Who has to come up with the evidence of not being uh, a risk to society? And no, that's the, the, that's the to provide, If you're going to come take someone's freedom, you have to provide a justification for that. And they have to prove that we're risky. We don't no, have to no, prove no, no, risky. No, there's a presumption of innocence. You know that under, that's the, not under how the way it works. democracy works, there's a, a presumption of innocence, and you have to make the proof of guilt. They haven't proven the guilt. We have a presumption of innocence. But the other thing is, we should just all declare ourselves gay and then go out to the public and say, we're being discriminated against, and then we'd win hands down because, you know, you join one of these other groups. Maybe um, tell them we've been the victims of sexual abuse or something um, when we were in the film industry. That sort of thing. We'd get massive public support. Come on. Yeah, you yeah, better be de demonetize idea. my video again. Demonetize the video again. Thanks, <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> well, uh, Ian Gates in the comments says, uh, have an ad campaign through all of the vendors mentioned. Get 10% or free shipping if you contact your representative using this link. And that's sort of, yes, that's a, I think that's a, a, a pretty good idea. But... But we we had uh, what's his name who uh, who lost the case? Somebody remind me of his name. Um, he's he's been on Jeffy? a couple. Of... No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, the lawyer, John channel. Taylor. John Taylor. John... He's he's yeah. been on a couple of times, and he's been fighting the corner. And the AMA have a look for our John Taylor videos if you've not seen them. But the AMA's never walked by his side or helped him along. Other people have. Other people in the industry have helped and helped with legal time. Um, 
So yeah, but if we're going to win this, we need to go outside. We're such a small community. We're such a small industry. The politicians will go, not interested. You know, you're, you're below the noise floor. We need to get the people of, you know, the public involved because they're the people who should be supporting this hobby. You know, their kids will then be able to have the freedom to fly toys in the parks and things like that. We need to get them. Only when you have enough people will you get any traction in the powers of thought. You either have money or votes. The only things that politicians deal in, money and votes. We don't have the money, so we've got to have the people standing up and saying, we want you to do this or we're not going to vote for you. Mm. Yeah, it, it's 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 a rum do that we're at. Uh, Victor's mentioning STEM. I I also do the STEM thing, and uh, all I can say is we're having not quite as bad in South Africa, but we've got a huge sports hall uh, that I can use. And you know, at the end of the day, all our flying activities will move indoors, <laughs> which is crazy. Yes, thanks, Ian, uh, John Taylor. That's right. But yeah, that's that's where where I can see it, and that's where I can see concerned parents worrying about you know these terrible model flying things and uh, it's such a shame it's such a shame but as ever we are preaching to the choir here aren't we we're all on the same team uh so we, we need to we need to get some very anti no no no, no. sorry sorry gary uh, I'm, on, I'm on the other team i prefer everybody grounded and all those that have at least an 80 page security matrix analysis uh, are able to fly so yeah, you stay grounded, Bruce. You stay grounded forever because you you are a danger to society, and I can fly my drones because I have the safety matrix already almost done. But I think um, Bruce is a danger, be flying or not. I mean, there's many ways in which Bruce is a danger to society. And I liked in your last video, Bruce, that you suggested we hit you. I like that a lot, and I would like to know where we we line up for that opportunity. Oh, well, any time, just drop in. People do. <laughs> so see, bring, your bring your own bat. Bring your own, bring your own bat. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's let's just move. So we've talked about the lady in the room. Just move for a second, Gary. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was just, just, I was just gonna say, I was I was surprised hearing that you had retailers in in the US that haven't um, actually stood up and been vocal. You know, even if it was in little ways on Twitter or on blogs or anything, for them not to have said anything. It's just strange. At least in the UK. We did get some dealers that did speak out and said actually that the laws that are being proposed are too strict. In fact, you had a mix. You, 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 some that were purely retailers of uh, uh, drone gear, pro for it. Those that sold drone gear and counter drone, uh, obviously saying, oh, well, these laws are fine. But you know, you, you could see where people's, um, you know, I guess their their, their monetary bias lies. And it just strikes me if you're selling the gear for racing, um, racing quads and so on, it it seems really strange to actually just stand by and let um, strict laws come by without even you know batting an eyelid. I've I've got a bit of a theory uh, to that, and it's that I don't think they think it applied to them or was going to apply to them. I don't think. I, I, think I, sorry, say again. They cannot think that. I do think I do think a lot. Well, perhaps the end users. I think, and I think also with the AMA crowd, what happened is I think everybody thought what's well, over there in the background. I think everybody thought all these news and rules and regulations that are happening around the world are coming in for white plastic uh, four rotor drones of the three letter DJI variety. Oh, that's Which not going to affect. Go on. An interesting point. Where was DJI on all of this? They were saying, yep. we're integrating their link connection into our thing, so bring it on because we'll be the market leaders with an integrated link system in our and drone, now, so we and, love these new regulations. And now Mr. Trump, when he wants to fly a drone, he has to ask China permission to fly the drone. Will they grant it? And at 20, 25%. And they had 25%. But, uh, well... Well, that has, but the, 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 the yes, the did. Well, let's cut to that then. The DJI um, uh, Lang thing is very interesting because that means there's no reason for people to leave the DJI ecosystem to go and get their permission to use to to use one of the other bolt-on uh, apps um, but that would provide heard, them. But last I've heard, the, they were supposed to make. Uh, the API is available to anyone, so anyone could integrate with uh, their Lang system. They I might be I wrong. Think, I think it was. I haven't, uh, follow, I haven't followed up that, but uh, they were supposed to make the, the system available to everyone. Well, 
large hole in the ground full of water. There were the two preferred operators to start with, and they've just bought on, I think, but I stand on the correction that it's another nine companies have been allowed to provide the service. So it's a total of 11. Perhaps they should have started with 11 at the beginning because the first two companies, of course, had a huge advantage for a short while. But that has been snatched away now, uh, I think, because DJI uh, are in the loop. And well, why would you use any other, any other um, app? Uh, to, to get the they're 70% of the market so no but you had to you, but you had to before you had to go to another app yeah. in order to get that service so awesome. you would pay for that app for certain parts of that and my VC funders would be very happy but now you don't need to do that so there, there are various companies uh, with uh, apps uh, that are perhaps going to be in a little bit of trouble because DJI is now uh, properly at the with its feet under the table. And you, there's a very valid point you make about uh, permissions for flights uh, routing via China. It's a very, very, very valid point. I don't know if I want to yeah, go down that. The, right the, the, the thing is, OK, um, looking at the perspective, and I'm going to defend DJI, um, looking from their perspective, it does not make sense for them to integrate with other systems because they are very um careful and very locked down on their system so they don't want everybody to hack or add stuff to their to their systems so it makes sense uh, in their perspective to to develop a system that their 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 drones will work with so yes. uh, it's absolutely reasonable and it's even more reasonable i still have to confirm that if they open up that to, to other systems, uh, and then everybody will have to catch up with them, uh, regardless of the call uh, from China to fly and, and all that uh, joke. Uh, but it, it makes sense uh, from their point of view. If it's good or not, uh, time will tell. Um, Ian Gates is saying people stop buying from DJI if it becomes a hassle just to fly. But Ian, that this this permission will apply to every vendor. It's going to be across the board. It's not a, a, a one one or the other. Uh, this is how it's going to be for everybody. And to answer to say, people say they're going to be flying illegally. Well, yes, I'm sure they'll continue flying illegally. But the difference is, there are there will be laws on the books to get you this time that's that's the trouble that there be laws and especially if electronic id comes in um which is again is something that um, venture capital funded companies are desperate to get in because their whole business model depends on electronic id Come on, uh, gary what's the good of that let that let's go back to the uh, when we start talking if it's not enforced yes 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 but 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 now so the local we are now, back at local, the no, but like in the, in the UK, the, the, the UK problem is it, the enforcement's going to go like right down to a traffic warden. It's not, <laughs> you know, it, 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 if that comes through, the, the people, council, will, Ian will be able to correct me, I think it was some form of council operation. Council wardens was... was council, the, council wardens will be able to enforce it. And they will. Uh, here, they, we have two sorts of, I don't know about the rest of the world, we have two sorts of police. We have our normal police catch you mr bank robber and we have our traffic police and the traffic police make a huge sum of money for our local councils we don't have demerit systems where you have points on your license and you lose it you just pay a fine and so you will find a traffic policeman if you're driving over here's your holiday tip for south africa if you come here and you see a tree of generally about 10 kilometers outside of a small town in the middle of nowhere that's where the traffic policeman will be waiting to catch you speeding and he's coming to take some money and local local councils in england will do that that's what they'll do they'll send the warden out and they'll say thank you very much 25 quid or whatever it is and that that's you know that's that's what am I ranting at? That's where the level of enforcement's going. I think people are missing that in in this piece. That's the sort of people that are going to be doing it. Someone else, stop me ranting. No, you're ranting very well. <laughs> Keep on. <laughs> no, it, it's um and and Victor's saying, what about home built craft? Home built, it it won't matter. So you're you're what you must. Uh, I think um, Bruce had the best explanation or run around of that. Really, you know, you're well, Bruce. Do you care to go through your one of your small child 
uh, going out to fly in the park rant. Oh, I can't remember that one. But one thing that I noticed on comments on my video, a lot of people are saying, oh, we'll just ignore the rules. We just, no, nothing will happen. But as Gary points out, once it becomes a revenue thing, once local uh, police forces and, and counties and that get the right to go and fine you summarily, summarily, yeah, um, just issue with a citation and a fine, then you can bet that enforcement will be quite significant. And therefore, ignoring the rules will not be an option unless you are very rich or very stupid. Yeah, or both. Yeah, but it's going to be. It's, it was Bruce. I can remember Bruce's rant, and he's quite right. I, I grew up in in making balsa aircraft and crashing balsa aircraft frequently when I was eight, nine, ten, or eleven, whatever. But now, in the future, if I'm eight, nine, ten, or eleven, and I want to go and do that, I'm going to have to make sure my balsa chuck glider with the rubber bands uh, registered. I'm going to have to have taken some form of test to prove I'm competent. Uh, I might even have to have a remote ID on board that thing. And of course, I'll have to have all the accompanying paperwork <laughs> that goes with it. So, I'll probably insurance as well. Oh, yes, I have to have the insurance as well. So, it's just, it's just, well, it's sheer lunacy again, preaching to the choir, isn't it? Wrong audience need to get people in here that might, that might protest. But that is sheer lunacy and it will just stop boys and girls enjoying a, a fun hobby which might take them into engineering and all sorts of things open up all You're sorts right. of worlds for them it is wrong audience and this is where we need to have a public awareness campaign to show remind the public of what the hobby's done over the years it's where the ama should have been out there in right front and center out there in the public spotlight showing how there's young kids learning valuable skills getting out of the out of the away from the computer and the playstation getting out in the the great outdoors fit and healthy all those wonderful benefits that it brings even showing some of the footage from the 1940s where entire families went to the nationals and motor companies sponsored the events and how wholesome and good this is and if you want to make america great again you've got to get back to those traditional values they should have done that and then the public would be going why are we why are we regulate why are we turning our children into criminals if they go and fly a toy in the park that's the that pressure then goes on the politicians and then they think twice about what they're doing but drop the ball there I really like that idea, actually, of like go out and find the influential people around the the world, or at least within the United States, you know, that have you know a modeling background, and you know, like was it, one of the three that landed on the moon. I don't remember which one now. Mm -hmm. You know, was you know a modeler, and that inspired him to fly and then lead this country into one of the greatest technological revolutions of the known universe you know <laughs> like so i it's i w that would be a very interesting way to approach that it's just like a series almost of like like this is what you're taking away carry yeah. on yeah no it's it's i say i say wrong wrong audience i was by drone saying that they're proposing the same delegated enforcement in australia and and mark, mark my words that is that's it and people in the comments are mentioning the police and things you haven't got to worry about the police it won't be the police it'll be it was a rite of passage in the village i grew up in to ginger ran the cricket club ginger looked after the cricket square ginger hated us all because we used to wait for rainy days our model gliders used to go buff into the cricket square and it would be ginger that's coming after us uh to uh to, to get the fine, not the police. Uh, Ginger won't, uh, the police won't care, but there'll be plenty of park wardens, parkies. I, I guess it's an international thing that park wardens are generally overzealous. Uh, that's the person that'll be coming to get you. Um, so you don't need to worry about the police and all that, which people are mentioning in the comments. It'll be a local, local, local person. And that's Those and the Facebook exalted, exalted people, the ones that get uh, riled by everything on Facebook, if you if they get you doing something, they'll nag you until exhaustion. So Bruce, you have trouble with that, Louis? Do, do people do that to you? Do people do no. that to you, Louis? No, come on. <laughs> uh, when I fly, I don't even have cell phone coverage, so I really couldn't get less. That's a good point. With this link system in the UK, and they want all these things where you have to log in. What if you want to fly somewhere where there's no cell phone coverage? That's probably the best place to fly because it's going to be the most remote, the least likely to have people, property, and aircraft there. But you won't be able to fly there because your smartphone won't let you register your flight with the authority. Oh come on, Bruce! I have I have the a paper a paperback uh, folio full of documents, including the uh, paper printed authorizations. So. 
uh, I just showed the paper, uh, the paper authorization to my drone, and it'll fly. Yeah, no, and and you can do that with Altitude Angel. You can do do that in advance. Uh, Adam's saying that uh, that they're scared too as a commercial operator. There's plenty of us that are cozying up to the UTM crowd for protection. I'm not sure they are there to protect you, really. <laughs> Adam, we'll see. Uh, UTM, I said it on uh, LinkedIn. I, I don't necessarily disagree with the uh, unified uh, traffic management or unmanned traffic management, as people say, because air traffic control does need an update. It is a very dated way of doing business. Um, but uh, I'm going yeah, I'm I'm to start my own UTM. I'm going to call it drone condom for full coverage and your protection. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. And, 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 and ribbed for your pleasure. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, that's very good, Bruce. Uh, someone actually earlier on mentioned um, uh, that we're going to use Bitcoin or something. Of course, here around here we use a uh, Bruce coin for any sort of digital uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I what what is what is the answer? What is the answer? I'm looking at the comments. Trolls. Well, the thing is, trolls, we, trolls right here, we should we should come up with an answer. We've lots of bright people on the screen here in front of me. So we we need to sort of saying what is the answer? Let's come up with an answer. And I think um, I think we had a good idea there. Get the people who have modeling in their background and now have a high profile, get them to come out and support this. So we have they're not going to do it on their own. We have to go to them and encourage them to do that. And then organize a campaign, a concerted program of rollouts where every Second day in the media, there's a feature story about someone yeah. who had a background yeah. in model aircraft and look what they're doing now and get the media involved. Tell them there's mileage in this because you will get advertisers and you will get whatever. And if necessary, have the damn industry promise to advertise against stories like that so that we're going to the, the, the media will go ahead and publish them and then just roll it out, roll it out. And then at the bottom of them all say, this is now under threat due to the reauthorization bill. You know, uh, we need you to speak to your local representative and ensure that. These are not the last of their kind. These are not the last people who will ever progress to this height, starting in the model aircraft as a hobby. It's a, it's, it's a tomato sauce sachet, but it's the closest I've got to a red card for you there, Bruce, because, of course, um, remember, in, in this uh, Hangout, common sense is not allowed. So uh, a red card there for your common sense actions. Um, yeah, no, that ma does make a, a, a lot of sense. So where would we start? If we're going to do that. Where would we start that? And how would we convince companies that are struggling? Let's face it, most of the commercial operators are struggling to make their, their money at the moment. How are we going to get them on board? I think we need to go to the big names, the DJIs, and also the retailers, the Walmarts, the, the people that are selling these drones and making money out of them. We need to go to them. They've got a big advertising budget. Find the people that have got the advertising budget and get them to sponsor a series like this because it'll also reflect kindly on them that, you know, they're sponsoring a, a series of articles which show America at its best and finest hour, you know, all that sort of stuff. You really, what it needs is someone with good PR skills, good spin skills, someone who has the ability, well, Chad Kappa should do it because he's the man who's, you know, in that position. Perhaps we should suggest it to Chad as part of the FPV Freedom Coalition that this might be a good strategy for them to get started with. But I think from what I've heard back, they want to set themselves up as a CBO and try and have uh, some kind of influence as a CBO. But I think the whole CBO thing is flawed because I don't see the FAA delegating much in the way of power to CBOs. If they wanted to delegate power to CBOs, that would left 336 in place. Well, I... Something's got to be done. Something's got to be done, and uh, I think it's that's a really good start. So, well, then, should we agree to try and start it from here now, right now? <laughs> Don't know how it's going to happen, but uh, yeah. okay. Put your credit cards out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but it is. It is as as um, as was said before. It is an issue of money. We don't have the money, but we can leverage other people's money to do this through sponsorships and whatever. The people who have the most to lose from this are the people selling drones, right? So they're the people who should be bankrolling this whole program. We've got to sell it to them. They're our target. These are the people we should be dealing with. Those are the key people. If they get on board, there's nothing we can do. We need to get those big, you know, box retailers there lined up. That should be the first step of a of a thing like this. Sell it to them. You know, this is the way to get your name alongside, you know, important people's faces on the media. And once you've got them behind you, then you can go to the media and you can pitch it to them and say, this is a great idea for a story. We've got your advertisers lined up and 
media are basically lazy and if you write something they'll publish it if there's money involved so you can then manage the media to get the stuff out there i mean it's all a management thing it's all about managing i've spent a lot of time in the media and especially the online media uh, and it's easy to manage the media if you you give them what they want they don't want to you know, if you look at most of the news stories these days, certainly around here, it's a press release with a byline on it. And that's much easier than writing a story. And we have fake news because we don't have any journalists left. They just they just take what they're given and publish it. They don't check facts or anything. So take advantage of this. Let's use this to our benefit by delivering the stories to them in a nice format and the advertisers to them. They will run with that. They'll run full speed yeah. with it. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're bob on right. We've actually got a really good example in the comments there's somebody that's a fantastic example of uh, of leading uh folks uh, in or dragging people into the hobby and a positive news story that's Manjit from model scoff what it's called uh battle of britain model squadron i think he's in the comments at the moment and i should imagine that's done a great deal for the uk those of you who don't know that was basically second world war aircraft uh, fpv combat fighting and reenacting battles uh, I saw him on the BBC. He was on the BBC, so it must be true. He must exist. Oh, he's been on here as well, so he must exist. But that, that's a, a, a so that's a sort of that's a very and so now I suppose in the UK at least is the time to leverage that hype. Uh, be you know the very good time for the BMFA to get on board with it and leverage it quick. I still haven't seen that unfortunately, um, but uh, yeah. yeah you do that. We do that other countries have to play their part if we do that then the americans can say look we're being left behind our regulations are compromised look at these other countries they are praising the people who built the, the you know the aviation industry started the models we are effectively locking our children out of that path of progression it, so then if you embarrass the politicians into action but it's if interesting there's one thing we don't like it's not being first well um, <laughs> unfortunately the, the america is 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 so far at the back of the RPAS queue, it's unreal. <laughs> but um, but there, well, I, what I was going to say is that Australia was has always been my go-to example of forward-looking regulation and look what they do and see how good they are. And I tell, I'll say to anybody all day long, look at the American, uh, the Australian regs, and we should be following them. But they seem to be having some hits and misses and stops and starts now, and they seem to be getting. You know, I believe they're. MPs are getting involved rather than their aviation regulator, and they're they're undoing all the good work that Australia's it's done. Happening, it's happening around the world. It's happening in New Zealand too. There's calls from politicians to register these damn drones and all that sort of stuff because they they don't understand the problem and they're reacting to this is it. They're reacting to public opinion. So the most powerful tool we have is public opinion. If politicians are prepared to, to say let's override the regulators, the people who do this as a, the professionals, let's make them do what we want to do because the public are telling us this, then if we can get the public to tell them, let kids fly drones in parks or talk planes in parks, that's exactly what will happen. Public are our friends. We must be dealing, carrying favour with them. Mm. 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 Well, we should, well, we'll get Chad on. We'll get Chad. We'll tell him. We'll tell Chad. <laughs> we'll just tell him. That's quite simple. Uh, really, do really get it outside though with outside the rc community and drone community for influencers because you see a lot of the photography video guys the vloggers are on, on youtube with huge followings and they review all the camera gear and they always review drones as well they, you, you really you, you need those kind of people speaking up as well the unfortunate thing is many of those don't really use drones in a responsible manner, so they probably just want to stay under the radar and not compact, not com uh, campaign about anything drone related. But really, they, they won't really be. I don't think there'll be real change uh, in public opinion wider outside our hobby until you get people that are seen in other circles speaking up about it. In the but as a community, we we need to do stuff like I go to the schools and I take drones to the schools and models to the schools. And the kids get really excited and enthused and the teachers really love it. The kids go home and tell the parents, you can work at it from a leverage perspective and we should be doing more. I mean, most of the modelers I know, are, are, they really, they don't give much back to the hobby. They go out on a Sunday, fly their planes, go home. That's it. But they don't go out there and they don't spend the time interacting with the community. I, for a long time, have tried to get the national model flying body here to have a national model flying day where we throw the doors of all the clubs open and we get the mainstream media there and we make it a big event, you know, a national event that for at least for a, 
a day is in the face of everyone in the country showing how wonderful this hobby is. But they said to me, well, people, the members don't want to do it. They don't, they're, for a start, the, the clubs have already got too many members or they, this, this, this Sundays are so valuable, they just want to fly. They don't want to spend the time dealing with people. And I'm thinking, well, you get what you deserve if that's your attitude. Come on, Bruce. Uh, step up and uh, run for president of the New Zealand AMA or uh, whatever it is. Run for president. That won't change, that won't change the clubs, though. It, the problem is at the club level. It's at the grassroots level. The members, they're only in it for what they get out of it. There's, there's not on. enough people giving back. Come I mean, on. That's the problem. Step, step it up, Bruce. Run, run for office. You know, for at least one, two, three, four, five, six votes you'll have on this panel. Come on. Don't count Run me in on that. <laughs> Come on. We'll all, we'll all go to New Zealand to, to cast our votes. You you pay the beers. If I go to New Zealand, I'm just going to fly. Sorry. <laughs> you can go hobbit hunting. That's what everyone does yep. there. Man says in the comments that uh, flying mic lights in Germany notices that their aircraft charts had specific model flying areas identified on them. You'll also find that in the UK charts as well, Manjit. Uh, they're, they're there as well. Um, but that's part of the problem. If, uh, and that's what the uh, delivery drone operators of the world want. They want us put in our little paddocks and that's, that's where the models live and that's that. Um, nowhere but this else. is also part of the problem in terms of safety. Uh, the airfield here has a, on the VFG or the AIP plate, it has a large box saying models may be flown during daylight hours at any time. So you would think, you would think that pilots coming here would play it safe and do an overhead join to, to do a reconnoiter of the airfield to make sure it's clear before they come in and land. No, they just fly straight in on long finals. So why are the manned aviation community bitching at us when they're not taking quite reasonable safety measures to preserve their own safety? I mean, this is one thing that annoys me and we really do have to also push to get the regulations for manned aviation changed to reflect the high risk that now exists below 500 feet. Well, well, for, well, just you can even park drones. Just, just they just need to improve their game. <laughs> just park. Forget drones exist. They've got to improve their game. Manned aviation is unnecessarily dangerous. And we, I, I speak with, with a real pilot here, um, with Jack there. Um, but, but people are con constantly flying into mountains in bad weather. Constantly uh, making poor, uh, uh, poor aviation making decisions. Uh, uh, with hu humor factors involved left right and center um yeah before before they start jumping up and down um model aircraft mo model aircraft flying has killed a few people over the years it's not many but a few people have been killed um, but it is still nowhere near as many people as uh, are killed every year in in general aviation um so are and we, that annoys again, me are, too. Are we the problem? Because when I speak to the regulator, when you speak to the regulator and say, "Look, you know, how about toughening the rules on manned aviation?" They say, "We don't need to because they've got skin in the game. So therefore, you know, they've already got a far greater awareness of safety." And I point out, "Well, no, they don't have. Even though they've got skin in the game, they're still crashing into things and breaking the regulations. So that really isn't a factor that should be considered." Hmm. Yeah, no, I know. Um, what apps do Hobby use? I think. Uh, well, of course, uh, all, all good pilots use uh, Altitude Angel, available at the top of SUS News on the front page under the drone safety map. Um, you could use Candy that. Crush. You, Don't forget Candy, Candy Crush. Candy, Everyone Candy uses Crush. Use that. Uh, you could use, if you fly with uh, using RG Pilot, and Altitude Angel's built in to that. Uh, the other one is built into um, the other oh. ground control station. Um, what's it called? Air Map. Oh. Air Map's in the, in the other one. Uh, and then uh, if you're in America, it's no before you fly. If you're in New Zealand, it's whatever you've got over there. <laughs> What's it called? They went with air maps, which doesn't even show the no terms. It's a complete waste of time. It was a trial anyway, so hopefully they're not going to implement that. Uh, Rich Russell says, from memory, more people have been killed on bouncy castles. I'm very sure that's right. If we just park military drones and just put them to one side and forget them, I don't think uh, if we just say the word drones... Uh, I don't think many people have been killed by drones, and and, and only a few. I, I think from, again from memory, I think worldwide it's six or seven people a year are killed by model aircraft. It's some. It's a number less than ten, anyway. I know. Is it that, that many? Uh, yeah. I didn't think it was. I thought there was only six or seven in Tigris. And no. using using the bouncy count, uh, castle as an example, there's been two young kids in, in the UK, and think within the last twelve months killed from uh, bouncy castles with them you know not being secured in high winds 
Yeah, yeah, people don't bring that up. And the same people <laughs> bring up something about drones four years ago where, you know, it, it was minor in comparison. But um, it was drones that caused those high winds. <laughs> yeah. The regulation. The drone, hit the drone hit the bouncy castle. That's it. Killed the kid. <laughs> and Adam was saying, I meant for pushing the message. Oh, so pushing the message of supporting hobby rights. <sighs> That, that it's 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 too late it, it, the the uh the 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 horse is bolted um also we don't have rights remember there's no rights in modern society you have freedoms but rights are privileges it's, a, it's all privileges and therefore you should be grateful for what you've got you don't have rights even the constitution in america has been set aside in the case of this new um authorization bill your privacy has gone by the by uh, so yeah i don't think there are any rights involved Oof. Oof. Big, that's a big statement, isn't it? This is a big statement. Well, did you no, watch the um, video I linked to? He was saying about the is a fourth is it the Fourth Amendment in the Constitution, yes. the right to privacy. Well, that's gone because now they can walk up to you and say, "Give me your ID, papers, please." Um, that, so incrementally, the rights of American citizens are being dissolved by the changes that are being made. Come on, Bruce. If you're driving a car, uh, even in America, you if a policeman stops you and asks you for a driver's license, you have to provide it. But they have That's to have reasonable the, grounds to suspect, don't they? No, they can ask you for a driver's license. You don't, you don't have to give your name and address to a policeman in America. You don't have to. It's not, it's not an obligation. You don't have to do it. Under the Constitution, you have the right not to do it unless you're being arrested or whatever. Um, yet, if you're flying a drone, you do have to do it. That is correct. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Then you guys well, the are... In, in deeper in deeper waters than calling China do to be able to fly. Well, the, it, it's it's the it's the it, the overarching powers come from the fact that it's been that, that model aircraft and drones have been pulled into grown up aviation, and grown up aviation has always had sort of extraordinary superpowers um, as far as the law is concerned. You know, if you punch the pilot, you're in deep trouble. Um, so it's it's that that's the trouble that's one of the one of the little snags is it's not just it's law plus <laughs> it's aviation law and getting you on aviation -y bits and uh, that's that's where it's different to your normal day-to-day -day driving offense or something like that um, um no in the comments is saying but you don't have to, you don't have to provide your information to officers ask okay well that's Yes, uh, it's it's a, it's a thorny subject, Look, and it's 11 minutes past the hour. So I'm going to have to say to Nicola, what have you been building while we've all been doing <laughs> ranting? <laughs> well, I've been listening to you, but, you know, all that talk about America really can't chime well, there, there will that. There will be a short exam shortly for you, so I hope you have been paying right. attention. Yeah, I have been. Uh, well, I have been uh, doing the wiring on the crosswind wings, installing the motor and putting in the connectors, and I still have to um, wire this whole thing up and glue the motor covers. So pretty much that's what I've been doing while you've been ranting. Sorry about that, but just had, have to get that done. And uh, I wasn't able to work a lot throughout the day so i'm just catching up on some work and now i'm just gonna be extending some wires on the new copter frame well that i it was just i've been i've been rather amused watching you moving stuff around <laughs> while we have been ranting on now that uh crosswind poorly named i yeah. think that is the platform that we think uh okay just call it nimbus pro because that's uh you know an alternative name that's being thrown around doesn't matter really. Osbo, but we'll get back to Osboy drone. We'll get by Osboy drone in a second. Uh, but uh, what was that speed controller you had out there? It's just been asked in comments. But that is a platform that we fully expect to be able to do six hours, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I do think, given some preliminary data about its performance, I do think that is a possibility. And besides, I think last time I did show you the sheer inside volume of that plane and just look at this thing. Uh, just one second so I can show you a comparison with the Believer Wing. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. 
<laughs> well, I'll get, I will get him to ask what the speed controller was. It's again. not even as big as that drone that's being restored. Okay, no, it's so not. No, it's not. Is it? That's, that's an interesting comparison. Oh, wooden propellers. Well done. This one is the Believer Wing, and this one is the Nimbus Pro Wing, and you've got, you know, a few centimeters more on the cord side, and. Uh, Wingspan should be about the same, but you see the difference in the wings here. Mm, mm. This has got more wing area, and I think it will be able to easily carry a larger battery pack, which uh, ultimately added to that efficiency coefficient that I was given by the manufacturer. I think it might be able to pull that off, well, well given I mean, the, the rest of the payload. How many how many cells on that on that plane? Six cells or twelve cells? No. Well, the uh, plug and play gear is meant for six cells. Yeah. And uh, you better you better answer the the speed. What were the what was the speed controllers uh, on there? These are the plug and play ESCs, Hobbywing Platinum, forty amps, the oh. pro version, and these are actually high grade controllers i do love these and i'm using them in most of my planes and they've been perfect throughout and what do you reckon oh, the uh, all that weight will be is also being asked in the comments oh haven't put anything on the scales yet so i have no idea but usually my builds are around four kilograms because i don't really weigh them down that much i'm not going to put any mapping cameras and i'm still thinking about how big of a lithium ion pack to build for this plane but i don't think i'm gonna go crazy heavy uh just because i don't like flying heavy planes so i think i'm going i mean i'm gonna be putting in uh i don't see it here not sure where i put it but one of these uh, omnibus f4 pro balls running or audio pilot on this thing so wiring wise and electronics wise it will be light and basically yeah the heaviest part of the whole build will be the battery for sure and when do you think we might be looking for video for that on your channel arc angel rc i'm thinking i should be able to finish this and also to replace the flight controller on the believer by the end of the week and if weather is good no wait not sure i'm gonna be able to fly over the weekend but i'm gonna get that done over a weekday or something but hopefully next week i should be able to put something together okay i'll, I'll look forward to that because it um I, I at the moment i can't think of a better mapping platform than the believer so i'm looking forward to seeing something that might be better i i, I am that would be good now bruce what toy were you holding up then as if we should be oh. interested it was interesting to see that 6L 40 amp ESC. Here is a 6L 50 amp 4 and 1 ESC. <laughs> Look at the size difference. This is so much smaller. And it's, it's um, I say, 50 amps, and there's four of them on this package. So, got to wonder why they make those things so big, eh? Oh, Louis, yes, yours is yeah, big. Yeah, hell of a, yeah. <laughs> but that, it's not about the size, it's how you use it. Exactly. Exactly. Like, so Bruce's, like Bruce's UTM. Go ahead. Sorry. I, had a, I have a friend that's interested, very interested in um, manned flight, and uh, as part of a project, we were building a heavy lift drone that uses the uh, the Hobby King like 150 cc motors, and paired with the Hobby King like the 300 amp ESCs that are like they're massive. Oh, that thing, that thing drove. Be beaten. That thing drove this prop. Which is a 27-inch airplane propeller, <laughs> and uh, we successfully did a test hover. And don't tell the FAA this, but that thing lifted 125 pounds, and wow. it has a it had a dry weight with batteries on it of like 60 pounds. So it was like 220 you're golden. pounds. You're golden. That's a part 103 aircraft. You're golden. There's no need, yeah, to, right. uh, there's no need to, to do anything like that. No need to register on the AMA. So Nothing. Don't need to do anything with that. And that, that's a ridiculousness, isn't it? You know, you can go down the rabbit warren of getting registered for your 
for your phantom or your mavic or whatever but you can build something that you can sit in and, yep. and you're golden it's really well, we, that's the future we that's the future of the hobby we'll all build quicksilvers and put mannequins in them and fly them remotely and people won't know that it's not a 103. yeah yeah i know uh, well i the i thought the best news i for me because i'm that sort of a person was the electric uh cessna caravan uh that that is the beginning of useful useful cargo carrying drones not bloody yeah no. oh i'm going in instantly into ranty mode aren't i but not just ridiculous silly little loads over short distances but a certified aircraft so it's although they've changed its propulsion so the whole aircraft is done for commercial operation um you're not reinventing the wheel i that's how i believe it's all going to arrive it's going to arrive like that not not by making some new fancy so i posted a thing today some multi-engine hybrid super duper thing it'll never it'll never fly i'll stop ranting yeah, but they won't use 40 year old ga airframes it'll be all new composite super light super strong super stuff but it'll be it'll be larger aircraft now uh, well, the, uh, the new, the new the new Cessna is a, tw a twin engine. It's a Cessna are making a twin otter, really. They're making a modern carbon fiber twin otter, and uh, and yeah, that that will that that would would suit that um, perfectly. Good old Mick Malloy uh, from um, the Outback Challenge, no less. And Richard just said that the recent UAV Outback nobody won. Challenge was, nobody won. They didn't drop it. it. Wasn't dropping close enough to Outback Joe, apparently. Apparently yeah. so, yes. But I but mean, the, the what curious I thing was the, the guys that went in with an hybrid uh, multi rotor. Yes, and did, and did very well. well. Very, very well, yes. Yes, so, that was amazing. Yeah, it's, um, yes, I was, yeah, you say curious, I, I say surprised. But yeah, you're oh, right. Uh, come on, uh, look, look, look at the technology. What is a VTOL? Uh, is a small multi rotor and a, a big plane. Uh, so those guys went all the way. So went with a big multi rotor. And uh, the how do you increase dramatically the the autonomy of an electric multi rotor? You get more power in it, so you get an hybrid system. Done. Yeah, yeah. But then if well, that, Keep it that simple, comes. Gary. Keep but that's simple. where it comes, well, it comes back to the caravan having useful payload. If the payload was five kilos to Outback Joe, would it have been the same? Most likely. Because it was a flower. At the end of the day, it was a flower in, in the thing. Yeah, but the, it was, the, was, the was, thing just increase the size and increase the, the, the petrol reserves, and it's done. For those people that don't know, the Outback Challenge is, in my opinion, and my opinion's worth it. <laughs> That's not is the is the best of uh, PAS competition in the world by a long way. And the reason it's the best is nobody won it this year. Why do I say that? Because it is flipping hard, and you know they, they don't sh they they shout equally about success as they do failure, and. Um, they set big challenges as they're hard to do and it's it's great it really is great and it has probably done more than anything else to bring this industry on i can't think of anything else that has bought bought this in industry on as much as the outback challenge and runs every other year so it does now let, yeah what was let, it was? Let's, let's wait uh two years for the next one and i hope the guys will step up the the the, the, the demands because well, they, had, they were almost there, and 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 they had yes, but in the first few years, nobody even managed to leave the airfield. <laughs> you know that's how far things Which have is, come. Okay, I understand the pressure uh, on the competition, but come on, not even taking off and leaving the the the, the base field, it's hard. Well, but that come that on, was, that was they, they needed a Bruce. They needed a Bruce there. But that was 2007. Things, the life looked very different in 2007 to as it in does 2007, now. In 2007, I built my first autonomous model with a home book flight controller, and I had it taking off from the runway here and landing on the runway completely auto automatically. So it was something that was practical to do back then, but I just think it was, you know, early days. Yeah, no, it was. So it was, it was. Two years, do we sponsor Bruce to be at the Outback Challenge? 
Well, well, we can with this green screen. Can you, can me be a a slammer beam off the field and people can drop flowers on me. That's that sounds good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're not Joe. You're not Joe. You're Bruce. <laughs> uh fx knows was saying was there some rg pilot connection there's plenty of plenty of rg pilot connection there's some um, uh tridge was there there was i think uh well, yeah. almost all the teams all were the teams. running mm -hmm. uh are the pilots one team was running if i'm not mistaken paparazzi uh which was the delft uh, team and one team entered the competition running PX4 and it changed overnight to Ardu Pilot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. congrats to those guys that did a wonderful job of moving from uh, flight control platform overnight. Uh, yeah. That's commendable. Yeah, it's, it, it's an amazing comment. Mick Malloy is one of the judges who is in our comments right now. He says he should be working. Apparently, he fixes his day jobs fixing F-18s. And I've seen on Facebook people are saying, why is Australia, uh, you know, uh, such a hotbed of in yeah, innovation? And, um, it, well, it's competitions Because like everything's this. trying to kill you. Because nah. everything's trying to kill you, yeah. They, they managed to get rid of Bruce because Bruce actually, of course, is Australian. Um, but that's his. He's, oh, he hasn't. I thought he'd froze. I thought he'd well, go. He escaped, I escaped, I tell you. He escaped, yeah. But as we know, when the tide's out, you can always walk back across. Um, it's it, only a little island. Yeah, absolutely. The island just off New Zealand, I believe you said in an earlier video. Yeah, I know. It's a great competition. And um, yeah, uh, one day, one day I shall go to it. Um, I don't know which day that'll be, but one day I shall go to it. Now, what are we doing for time? Goodness me, look at the time. It's 25 past. Now, so did anybody else see anything else that caught their eye this week? No, but bef I, before I forget, I want to thank Paul for that idea about the um, getting celebrities on board, you know, that started in the hobby. That is probably the best idea I've heard um, through this entire thing. So hopefully someone will run with it. But I piggyback that off of your something you said, so it's, it's all back to you. So, <laughs> hang on, you get the tomato I mean, sauce. I'll, careful, I'll take credit anytime. Like no, no problem. But yeah, that was nice. <laughs> well, it's all very, it's all very well saying you know it's a good idea. Where do we take this good idea? What do we do with this good idea? How do we roll this good idea out? I'm gonna call the executive president of the AMA tomorrow. And Is you that guys gonna? You guys can hold me accountable to that to to start this process of getting hold of people because like I I feel like you'd be able to get a hold of Buzz, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it worth tweeting Donald? Should we send Donald a tweet? Maybe he'll get him online, you know? That I mean, it's it, I wouldn't put it past him. Same thing with Elon, <laughs> you know? They yeah. but they're all. Well, mind they're you, all Elon's probably busy smoking dope and licking his wounds at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I loved how much. Oh my gosh! Like that's the same thing, though. It's like, you know, it's it's one little thing that people are like, ah, this must make everything come apart, you know. Uh, anyway, sorry. Well, I, I mean, our, our, our big problem is if, uh, you you have to go back and watch all our videos, but you'll see that Balpa, British Airline Pilots Association in the UK, have been big trouble, and they put up a bogus, um, or they're a part of a a, a fairly bogus. Uh, ballistic test against aircraft parts. Uh, Bruce uh, had put his um, video up about the other recent one in American University. He happened to pick a Mooney because Mooney's very quick. And, you know, there's all sorts of bonus, uh, of bogus uh, studies and things being put up by by people there. There I disagree from Bruce's video about the Mooney because uh, they were showing a worst case scenario. Uh, yeah, I see they were showing. Did you see the comment? But we create yeah, regulations that. based on worst case scenarios. Yeah. Did you see someone else put a comment saying that the Dayton University is like a trailer park university? It's <laughs> there's some really <laughs> disparaging things to say about that place. <laughs> we have to we have to ask Paul to send the drone to overfly that university so that we might be sure of it. And why why is I, no one bringing I've, I've already I've already got enough eyes on me. <laughs> that George Mason study, which did use bird strike data to calculate the risk, the real risk, a scientific evaluation of the risk of drones colliding with aircraft. One incident causing death or injury every 400 years at current rates of operation. No, everyone ignores that. Yet it's a credible document, but it doesn't fit the, the, the picture that they want to create. And I find that annoying. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. It's, um, yeah, it's madness, isn't it? it um, all of it is madness. Uh, and we do need to change the narrative. That's what it comes down to, isn't it? We need to, we need to change and we need to drive the narrative, as Bruce says. It needs to be frequent. We need, uh, people I've been told need to hear about something at least five times. So we need at least five famous people. Pity David Bowie's gone on. He was a very famous era modeler. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we need his music in the background. To see the, the see kids the, today would say David who? Well, quite. <laughs> we, need a rapper. we need a rapper, you know. That's what, ooh, a rapper? Ooh. Yeah, a rapper, because the kids can relate to that, you see. But, uh, there, the are rappers rappers that, there are rappers <laughs> that fly. Pretty sure DMX flies FPV drones. He's a yeah, rapper. I've, I've seen him on the receiver. And uh, Dead Mouse flies uh, like DJIs and stuff. There so, you go. Those are the people who need to do Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, see, you see, all of us are like, oh, great. <laughs> is the, oh, who's that? <laughs> he's, he's very well known, actually. If you could get the likes of Dead Mouse speaking yeah. up, that, that would definitely uh, be a, a huge positive. But it's, yeah, it's, it's trying to get to these people uh, and for them to, because obviously we use celebrities, you get some that are, are keen to take on causes and reply back, and you've just got others. They just ignore what's going around on around the world other than around themselves. Let's right. just read what Louis is reading. Them. Let's just read what Louis reading. Look, can you see that now? I've just clicked on that. Does that can I present that to all? Come on, I can show you. Jarus guidelines on Sora. On Sora. Hey. <laughs> guidelines on collecting and presenting system and operation information for a specific UAS operation. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. to the world of real modeling. You, you see, know I showed you the bureaucrats in my last video. You could see them working very hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is only part one of three because there's three parts on this. So don't 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 comment too too hard on that. Uh, Adam's saying James May. Adam, I'll, I will drop you a James May video. He flew a glider across uh, to yeah. I'll drop you a video, Adam. James May definitely. Yes, yes he he would be a good person. And also, uh, Top Gear and Grand Tour, they use drones for a lot of their video shots as well. So Why, it's they're part of their production. Come Grand on, Tour was... Uh, they fly yeah, professionally, so they're, they're not worried. They would Grand just Tour crash them as the caravans anyway. Sponsor of uh, Drone Racing League last season as well. There you go. Yeah, Lundy. That's right, off to Lundy. Uh, I used to go there... I know he was in the Air Force. It was just I was based over there. But anyway, uh, that's, that's another life. Uh, right. It is 29 minutes to one in the morning here. So uh, I I think, uh, does anyone can else? I just, can go I just on, yes. I built? Go on then. It's my own counter drone solution. It's going up against DJI's Aeroscope. So yeah. It's called, uh, I'll just have to get it untangled from a chair. <laughs> the Aeroscope. I hope you can see yeah. that. Yeah, it's, Ian it's got a few yeah. bugs in it, so I'll show you it working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that! That's that's to detect your drones. Yeah, it keeps it keeps picking up alien xenomorphs by mistake. So I'm just going to fix that, but then that's yeah. in the market. Fantastic! And um, have have you been on Dragon's Den yet? I haven't yet, but that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like one million pounds for four percent. Of my Ian company, <laughs> that's brilliant. Show us, show us that working again. That was brilliant. There we go. Uh, that must be. And you know what? I reckon that's about as accurate as at least fifty percent of the things that you can buy right now. Yeah, oh, you, def you definitely can't uh, clone the IDs on this and. And, uh, that, that reminds me, a New Zealand company apparently has been working with a Saudi company and they've come up with a drone detection system, which sounds like a radio receiver tuned to the frequency of the video or the transmitter signals. And they're trying to sell it to aviation. They're going to sell it to pilots for 5,000 bucks a pop and it will warn them when they're flying near a drone. Seriously. Come on, you just have to be smart. Or clever. <laughs> it's smart or clever. <laughs> We'll have, we'll have a good marketing department. Yeah. No, that I, too. That too. Yeah. There, I think there's going to be some very big uh, exposés of some of this uh, anti-drone uh, counter UAS technology soon. Some of it does work, but it's only a handful of things that do work. 
is not not many of them actually works but but there we are I have, flying a mission and... i'm trying to think of what i can say here i i have been to a test range where different companies were demonstrating their top of the line stuff uh for the united states government and it was uh, i brought some racing drones and showed them them and flew them a couple times and almost all of them were like they can fucking do that yeah well the and, um and, the, uh, and so i'm like so here's my card red team call me anytime i will beat all of your systems anytime never received a phone call just saying Funny, huh? well, well, imagine. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I'm very it's sure. Like that UK crowd. Remember the UK crowd that uh, sort of sold the bomb sensing units to the UK government? Was it a, a company was supposed to sense and detect mines or something? And it was completely ineffective. And they got millions of dollars out of the government selling these fake mine detectors. Um, yeah, it was a British company, and this, they sold it to Iraq, uh, I think, and other countries. And yeah, it, it was it, it was basically, I think. Uh, some sort of plastic device and you fed in sort of cardboard that was supposed to be <laughs> programming it with some other um capabilities yeah but it was it was a complete and total fraud <laughs> and, that, and that's a lot of money to be made doing that and i think these guys are onto something with their anti-drone solutions yeah no it's, it's um yeah there's there, there there is some utter utter nonsense out there there are a couple of things that work i know there are a couple of things that work but on specific models, it, it, on specific brands. No, the, well, I think the, it, was, the, it was pretty clearly proven that if you fly a Mooney M20 into a drone, you can stop it. Well, yes, yes, there yeah, is if that. It's, if it's hovering, yeah, you can get it anytime. Yeah. We just need a trebuchet loaded with M20s that would just drone defense. Well, I was going to say to the racing drone point, the Israelis are using them quite effectively against the kites that are. Um, uh, just dropping incendiary devices over the over the border. I mean, it's such a simple way of dropping those devices, but they are using racing drones to cut the wires of the. Oh, there's Chris I4 How you doing? Uh, of 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 those kites. That's you know, awesome. Yeah, technology. They should, they should be using racing drones to clear birds away from airports too. I do it here. Like we had some ducks that took residence here, and I spent. Two days dropped because the ducks would keep coming back. So I flew around, kept them away for two days. Finally, they buggered it off because ducks are a real menace to aviation. Um, so why aren't they using, you know, we have this big $400 million a year in bird strike damage, especially around airports. Why don't we have drones that go out and just drive the birds away? And oh, they might are, have a flight every 10 minutes. There yeah. are yeah. Crazy. to an airport. <laughs> Well, there's those, those, those very fancy uh, flapping ornithopters uh, that do that very thing. A uh, Dutch company... Uh, Birds.ai, I think it is actually. Uh, they 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 do that stuff. But that that was one of my jobs. And the lowly air, airman uh, was was scaring birds away. The Sappho vehicle, which gave us access to weapons and things that they probably shouldn't have let eighteen year olds play with. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's another story for another time down the pub. And on that note, uh, I am going to say for the last time, look, I've seen and I have seen your uh, Bertie pod. Uh, that does look very interesting, and I've seen it before. I'm pretty sure we uh, we ran stories on that. Did oh, you, really? Yeah, good stories did, are bad stories. Oh no, good 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 <laughs> stories. It was good stories. Did um, is it working? Is it an operational ag drone yeah. system? It's I I would never let anyone but me fly it, but yeah, it technically works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it was it was a prototype for something different so oh, oh okay okay that was that was your excuse to buy the big motors and all the big gear oh he had them already he just needed me to assemble and fly them very good all right on that unless if anyone else has anything else does anyone else have anything else look look at look at nicola looking looking so look at him working away there Beaver in a way. That's great. Isn't it? <laughs> we look forward to that video and I'll Angel RC. I'm going to ask uh, Paul, have you got any videos uh, coming up in the future that we should look out for on your oh channel? And remind us of your channel name, if you will, please. <laughs> uh, if you go to nurk.tv, N U R K.tv, you get forwarded on to my channel. Um, 
do I have anything coming up? I just finished this massive series on a little trip I did to Iceland. Um, it's it's kind of vlog style. People don't like that all the time, but uh, hey, that's it is what it is. And uh, but I mean, we we got to travel around Iceland for like five days and got awesome footage from a bunch of awesome places. And so you know, that's kind of that's kind of the big thing on my channel right now. Other stuff that's coming out will be more like reviewy or just kind of little fun race videos and stuff like that. So yeah. Perfect. Okay, and then uh, Ian, um, I, I see you've 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 tidied up your office, and Dusty Bin is still in the background there. What's happening in your life? Oh, not much at the moment. I just I finished off building my well, I say finished off. I've got it up and running my computer for my editing rig, which I'll be continuing on with. But that's that's my focus at the moment. I'm a uh, with with the uh, drone. I've, I've kind of put it on the back burner for now until i see where all the where all the uh, laws are going and just general hassle around it so um I, i'm in the moment just in in that thought process of when i come around to my renewal for my commercial whether i'll renew uh, next year or not so um I'm, I'm kind of going for that bit of a downer with drones at the the moment just because it just feels like a fight all the time but uh hopefully i'll come out of the other side and, and be a bit more positive and that always that touches on things which we won't talk about now but for the fifth month in a row the numbers in the us for part 107s have flat or declined uh, which is interesting <laughs> and then they also are not quite sure of the number of people renewing because we're into deep, getting quite deeply into renewal territory there but that's a subject for another day i better find the numbers on that i'm going to skip across nicola there look at him head down working louis what's on your drawing board uh, the drawing board just preparing for another week of wind turbines, wind turbines and wind turbines all day. And something that I saw funny, I uh, don't know if you guys already mentioned this, um, the, um, David Vindestal, the, the guy that used to be cooperating with the flight test, that funny, he was an uh, addict to um, uh, tricopters and uh, and uh, it is funny to see his duo copter that he, he, he launched and is selling to the kids and also published the, and open sourced the, the schematics for, for the, uh, the drone. Uh, it seems quite a smart, uh, a smart thing. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, I believe it's, uh, it is a nice one. It would be appropriate for Bruce because it has some stretching and it, it it moves very fast so bruce get get your chops together and start doing those dual copters yeah i actually did a, a flying jetpack ken with a flying jetpack which was like a bicopter quite some time ago actually and um, it's still sitting out on the bench so yeah that's good <laughs> <laughs> All right, what am i going to do gary yeah what are you going to do <laughs> exactly you got uh, that i've decided to do a little series on long-range fpv it's totally illegal everywhere in the world except where nicola lives um yeah. so i figure that that's not going to stop people from doing it they're going to do it because they want to do it so i'm going to do a video which basically shows the safest way you can do it because rules are one thing but safety para, safety trumps rules every time and if people are going to do it then it's rather than say don't 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 and they'll ignore you show them this is the safest way the lowest risk way this is the way you're least likely to be noticed to cause injury or or death or break anything so if you really have to do it follow these simple guidelines and you might be able to do it with a you know, much lower risk than otherwise because i see people doing long range got huge aircraft like the believer or whatever it is and, and they get massive great batteries so if you hit an aircraft with that because of the apparent lack of situational awareness there is going to be a lot of trouble so i'm going small i'm going really small the smallest i can make it so that it's no bigger than a bird so even if you get caught you can say to the regulator how would this hurt anybody so trying to basically keep things safe not necessarily compliant but safe because that's the first thing speaking from personal experience the how could this hurt anything argument does not work it doesn't mean you shouldn't try though <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just yeah i'm just throwing is, it out the thing is, who, who are you talking to though the regulators will ignore it but a court a judge in a court they tend to take a little more pragmatic view certainly in this country more pragmatic view of things so even if you get convicted of something the, the penalty you're going to get is much lower if you can say well you know like um, this yeah. how would this hurt you the judge will look at that hopefully and take a more pragmatic view and say well okay um don't do it again 
in this country, we don't get to the court. There's because we have federal and civil penalties. And so like if you receive a civil penalty, you you can take it to court after a long and lengthy, annoying, horrible process, or you're just convicted and you just pay and you're done. And uh, so at that point, you're dealing directly with the regulator, which is very interesting. Coming back well, to our... He, well, uh, it's, he it's, always, it's, it's, always we, write someone else's phone number on the model. <laughs> you know. yes, that's right. And that's why we... The White House put, phone number might be a good choice. No, Bruce's, <laughs> Bruce's phone number. That's whatever. That's what I put on mine. Don't you put on yours? And then I guess we should ask then Nicola, but I think we've definitely have Paul back to unpack whatever this incident is that he's talking about. <laughs> I don't think we need to hear about this. And then Nicola, what are you, you're just finishing this stuff and we're looking forward to the videos. All uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, that's good. Excellent. Keep looking. I should have a quick video on the uh, on the believer crash I had. Uh, no real damage, but a real downer for the autopilot because there is probably some issue there. So it's just gonna come out of that plane, and I'm gonna put something else in there. Probably another omnibus board, and. Uh, yeah, might get the actually the original Nimbus plane back to a flying condition, and also I've got a Ranger two thousand four hundred coming. Okay, and that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting—a plastic body and a two point four meter wingspan. Should well, be interesting. We shall await with interest, and with that, and on that note, it remains for me to thank everybody very much for coming we have truly ranted on this evening stroke morning afternoon wherever you are in the world so thanks very much everyone thanks very much uh, dear viewers uh let's see if we can't find a way of uh, lighting some fires underneath uh celebrity modelers and uh, i think what we'll do now is we'll just uh, appoint paul as head of that uh, so there we are those nice slopey shoulders has gone from me and bruce and everyone else so yeah no i think we'll we'll back you paul we're with you paul all the way <laughs> thanks thanks guys that's a, no, it's a, pleasure. It's a pleasure that's some good good buck passing there exactly yes it has the that's what age does for you paul that's what age does for you <laughs> oh. all right guys thanks very much thanks very much for yours wherever you are in the world uh have a safe rest of the week uh it's gonna snow here tomorrow uh, 33 today snow tomorrow but anyway uh safe week if you're flying on the weekend be safe uh, we'll see you again 2100 gmt next week cheers for now bye-bye Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.